The motor's a 351 Windsor. So that's the badging shows that. And the, the old racers went from a 302 to a 351 for more horsepower. Just uh, it, all it is is a punched out 302. So it, this is the way that they built them in the early 70s for off-road racing like Bernalli Jones and Bill Strop racing and Big Ole and this is the combination 351 with the C4 transmission. Another thing is those Baja racers like the Big Ole was a two-wheel drive not four-wheel drive. So the uh, <clears throat> this is a Bill Strop specific cactus smasher with one of the other uh, options to have. And then I found these old school rock carts. Yeah. And, and then these are deets. These are from back in the day, these fog lights. Well, there they are. These are the um, BFG Mud Terrains 30, uh, 32s. Uh, they're good for off-road, they're great on the street, they just have that, that look from back in the day. What are these? These are uh, louvers, because uh, you want to extract the heat out of them, so what they used to do, they would put these um, fiberglass uh, additions and make the air, but I had this guy make this punch out these louvers and it's just lost art really and then the same with the visor this this visor is all aluminum with the and the air just comes through here now is that something strop does strop this is not a strop other racers use this specific you can't find these anymore uh, they're not made i mean it's too much yeah this alone. But the louvers, uh, most of the time now, I, the last I heard, these louvers are about three bucks a punch. Wow. So, uh, you, know, you do the math on that. So, here's the Carol Shalby was king of the road, Bill Strop was king off the road. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's that's a, a neat thing that I got those from, from Andrew Morton. This uh, chrome grill was very difficult to find. It's Ford stamped. It's not a reproduction from some other place. It's a real Ford stamp. Uh, I don't know originally if they uh, took it all the way down to metal and then chromed it, but I got it chromed and I had it re-chromed. Okay. And then there was a little blemish right here but you know what I left it because nothing's perfect yeah. uh, the reflectors again the reflectors they are not illuminated with the ball burn thing that's the way these came uh, a lot of the racers would take those off but for safety purposes for driving on the road uh, coming from the side you can actually see the vehicle so I did it for safety um, Tell us about the pinstripes. The pinstripes. And the, and the logos. Okay. Now, the guy that I had, Tim, from Napomo, do the pinstriping. I used two colors, the orange and the blue. He said it was one of the hardest things to pinstripe was this because there's a lip. And he stayed right above the lip. He started one day and he had to leave because he says this is a really hard. I got to get my head wrap around it to redo it. So he came back the second day and he, he did it. I had a gentleman named Sean do this gold leaf. He, it's all hand painted. And the gold leaf is turned by finger. And that's real 22 karat gold leaf. It's not paint or a sticker. That is the real deal. Same with this, powered by Ford. It's all hand painted in the two colors. And this is how they, what they used to do back in the day for the racers. They would hand paint whatever. And then back here, this is called the Shaky Bronco. 
It looks like you're going down the road, <laughs> bouncing around. So the uh, the old racers would call this shaky bronco, and they would put this on the side or on the front, underneath the windshield. Uh, so that was a specific type of uh, lettering. And back here, <clears throat> I'm. Uh, I was in the Air Force, and this is a World War II uh, fighter squadron logo. And I always liked it because I have horses and I grew up with horses. And so I always liked this in particular. That's all hand painted. Wow. So <clears throat> the same guy that did the lettering did this for me. Wow. And this is the, what, the interesting part about this. OV-10 was a military designation for an aircraft that they used and the call sign for the OV-10 is the Bronco. Okay. So okay. the military guys, some of them will walk up and say, OV-10 Bronco. Just go, Duh! Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this is my own little thing. Uh, a lot of the race guys used to put this, it's a good luck, in the back of their vehicles. So that's all hand painted also. Wow. I, fog lights on the bottom. Fog lights on the bottom. They work on the same uh, panel uh, as the front. So uh, when you, you flip your, it's all illuminated inside by you, so you know that the rears are off. So this is a Ford uh, invention. Mm -hmm. All this is all stainless. So when you drop your tailgate down and your drop and your license plate is here, you just grab this. Now yes. your license plate is oh. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. It's visible, it's legal. How big are the tanks? Uh, it's a 23 gallon. 23 gallon tank. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So it's one tank, right? Yeah, one tank. One tank. I I didn't do the underseat. So they had option if you wanted to get a set of paint underneath the seat. And I thought that was unsafe, so I <clears throat> just did the seat back. What kind of shocks do you have? Bilstein shocks. Bilsteins. Bilsteins all, all in the back, there's two Bilsteins on each corner. And in the front, I got these uh, wild horse coil over the, the coil. Uh, and then in the back is the Bilstein shock, the one with the black um, boot cover, the dust cover. This one here, they're really, in, I, it's unbelievable. The two front shocks are Gabriel's, and those are the ones that they used back in the day for racing. Gotcha. So what I wanted to do is just mix old with new uh, and not take away from the nostalgia and if, uh, I'm hoping that I'm making Bill Strop proud of the way I built this. Uh, did a great job. And then the uh, other thing, that, like Ali was uh, pointing out, the doors, they they shut and there's no rattle at all. They shut and they hold. And the lines are all pretty good on both sides. Uh, these are stainless steel hinges. Uh, as you notice, the chrome work around here in the drip rail. Very difficult. Um, you put the molding around the windshield, the chrome molding around the windshield. And then the other thing is uh, the rear window has the chrome molding. Yeah. So what I was uh, thinking that instead of making it a sport package, it's got the sport bright work, but the the strips that go here, the molding, I opted to go with the pinstripe instead of the pearl molding. So there's a lot of, not too much bright work. It just balances it out. And then all these are stainless steel, the welting. These are straw specific flares. They're not repos, they're the real strop layers. So there's a lot of um, components on here that they're really hard to find. And um, 
I was able to keep it because it was in it was a, a 1968 and 1972 the dealer that built the straw uh, that's when they did the conversion in 1972 right. so that's the story about the how it came about and then it stayed in Texas and New Mexico for more, most of its life on the um, west part of Texas and the east part of New Mexico or Roswell area. Uh, anyway, that's pretty much, uh, oh, the electric, the yeah, blue part engineering uh, windshield wipers. Instead of having the scissors um, with a lot of the, uh, or vacuum, these are the latest and greatest, I think, uh, windshield wiper motors. It's got the visors. The steering wheel is a reproduction of a strop racing wheel. Uh, I got this from Andrew Norton. And we rebuilt the whole inside of the um, steering column. Anything else door, you can think of? <laughs> the door handles are all new. Uh, Every, everything that I did, um, I replaced with stainless steel. And what else can I say? <laughs> <laughs> I did it right. You miss anything? You're off camber or something like that, they will flood out. Like carburetors will flood out. Yes. Now the heads are GT40 heads. Uh, they're aftermarket aluminum heads to take the modern fuel. And it has a RV cam. It's got the specialized headers. So the whole motor is brand spanking new. It was rebuilt in and out, and it's only got 468. Is that what you said? Yeah, 68,000 miles. <clears throat> then I went with an aluminum shroud, and you can see an aluminum radiator. And I got the burp tank here uh, for overflow of the radiator. This is a tank for the uh, windshield wipers, which are not uh, the right, the motor is not hooked up. Yeah. I just didn't. But here's the tank, and those little yellow nipples right there are for the hoses that go to it. It just distracted from the rest of it. Um, Who again, did the work on the motor? Uh, a guy named uh, Kurt in Pismo Beach. Uh, he's got Kurt's hot rods. So he's a hot rod guy. Um, yellow top battery. Uh, this billet is from the drive, uh, the four wheel drive Bronco specialty guys in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. It's got the MSD electronic ignition. All around it. I see the thicker wires also. Yeah, yeah. We went with a thicker Ford racing. Uh, so a lot of the, and then we did the, uh, if you notice, they're away from all the heat. Gotcha. And anywhere there's heat, we put some insulation to keep, like this fuel line here, we put that there so that uh, it keeps the uh, fuel from boiling. Gotcha. Uh, it's got, Billet, see all the bracketry? Yeah. It's all billet. Gotcha. Everything's brand new. The, um, it's got the uh, high flow water pump. <clears throat> it's got the high uh, output uh, alternator. So you could put accessories on here. And right. you could, you have room to put a dual battery system on. So that's the motor end of it. Now this, it's got a C4 automatic three-speed transmission with super rare strong tail shaft that has the, if you look up in there, you'll see strong just like here, you know, but only it's encased in the metal. It's a, it's a blue, but it's a strong. It's a the one that developed that uh, tail shaft 
for the rest of the Broncos when they started putting automatics in them because they did not come with automatics or power steering until Sprott developed all of them. So your power steering is all new. Everything's all brand new. Pump, and then we did all this steering here. Yeah. So all of that um, was a, is a necessity to make it. You could turn this with one finger. And go down the road. It goes straight. It doesn't no vibrations or no death wobble. Uh, it's got the uh, master cylinder and brake booster with a proportioning valve down below. So the brakes all uh, stop perfect. There's no yeah. going this way, going that way, just boom, stop. Nice. Yeah. What kind of wiring harness? Uh, it's a Syntec wiring harness. So if we go to this, we can look at the fuse box. It's all been upgraded. Every wire in this truck has been replaced with the Syntec. Gotcha. Okay, so if you go here, there's your fuses. Instead of going with a glass round old school fuses, you have this right here. That's your Syntec. And everything is marked accordingly to where they go. So there's nothing crossing into each other. Everything's perfect as far as you know, whatever it says, that's what it is. Right? Um, here's your, your VIN plate. The VIN plate, if you oh. notice, it's a U14, which is the desirable half cab. And this is a steel half cab, it's not a fiberglass. Uh, the glove box was replaced to the upgraded. Uh, plastic instead of the cardboard it shuts just like the doors yeah and uh, I was pointing out the doors shut like the I've never seen a Bronco that had this kind of noise when you shut the door I mean it's something something I haven't heard before and yeah. the gaps are perfect yeah these things are these doors are always out of whack this one's perfect yes yes so this is the chicken bar which is a strop accessory um, that's for the passenger to grab on and they call it a uh, chicken bar if you grab it you're a chicken yeah <laughs> <laughs> so here's the strop uh, original sticker uh, uh bill strop and associates and that's not a uh, duplicate that's the real deal right there and it it has all the paperwork here that shows uh what it really is from Baja Broncos Unlimited, Andrew Norton uh, has verified what this is and it's all documented um, with Andrew Norton's signature. Nice. If you look up Andrew Norton, he is the Baja Bronco specialist. Uh, I have a lot of the um, Parts. This is just a uh, the wiring harness. All the information is right there. Uh, here's some more documentation. Um, I'm kind of all this here is just receipts and everything that you need to know about the wiring and troubleshooting and so forth. Right yeah, there. we'll go through those. Yeah, yeah, it's important. Um, the paint color is bright gold metallic and the, the color was used on the high-end uh, Mustang Mach 1s and Boss 302s. And I, when I was a kid, in Santa Monica, there used to be some guys that used to cruise the Pacific Coast Highway with their cool Mach 1s and Boss 302s and this color just unbelievable in the sunlight. So what we did, we did the uh, all the belly underneath and on top, the floors and in the bed is all painted the same color except it doesn't have the clear coat to make it bright. It just 
it's it, this has all been done and we can see uh, I was showing Allie earlier how these panels are done so it looks factory everything is factory and it wasn't just undercoated black uh, like right. most people do we actually yeah. thought about uh, an extra step of making it match the rest of the car Correct. and it suits it yes the uh, this is a uh, ginger hound's tooth uh, they used it quite a bit in um, some of the Explorer packages and sport packages and um, so I always like the hound's tooth look and then I took it to a good friend of mine, a, a riff. Um, he's a, a pol master upholsterer in uh, Camarillo, California. And I like the diamonds. It just reminds me of uh, when I used to fly in the helicopters, there was always a diamond insulation and the diamond tuck is old school also. And then he put in this centerpiece and then he surprised me by putting the Bronco logo on the back part of the seat. This is an original U14 bench seat from Ford. And that was an option. You could either have the bench seat or the buckets. This is a Strat specific roll bar. Uh, uh, if you go, oh shoot, I had a sweater back here. And I didn't get See you again. How are you? Oh, hey, how are you doing? Oh, she just made it. It was raining. Oh, I hit rain. You brought your wife with you? No, no, no. She, yeah, yeah. So, um, if you look at that roll bar, they kind of look the same. That roll bar? Yeah, they look similar. Okay. It's a little bit thinner, though. Yeah. Well, let me show you the difference. See on the top the horizontal piece? See how it goes up on a peak? Yeah. So, if this thing ever rolled, it's going to roll on its side, not on the flat. That one will land on the seat. Yeah, yeah, Does that exactly. make sense? Yeah. Now, <laughs> the other part is that they're bolted in the bottom of the frame or on the bottom of the body. That one over there, it's, it's bolted in differently. So, I put all new uh, bezels. These are reflectors. They're not illuminated. They're reflectors. And you, this was... Uh, for 66, 67, and 68. And some of the 69s had the reflectors. Uh, the, um, got the backup lights. So there's a toggle switch on the dash for the backup lights. Then if you go, 